In this video, we're going to have a look at the inverse of a parabola. So in the previous video, we were looking at the inverse of a straight line. And so what we did was we drew the, a straight line and then we switched the x and y coordinates around. We're going to use the same approach now for a parabola. And so the parabola that we're going to start off with is the following. Can you still remember how to do a parabola? Well, if it's a section that you have struggled with in the past or if you have forgotten how to do it then I do have a course available on the website you just go to the all courses tab on your home screen and then look for the grade 11 course on graphs but basically what we should always do is we quickly draw ourselves a parabola so we know that a parabola is something that does that for example Okay, so now let's look at the important aspects of it. Well, it's got these two x-intercepts over here. So, okay, so that's something we're going to need is our x-intercepts. It has a turning point, so we'll find our turning point. I'm just going to call that TP. And then it also cuts the y-axis, so we'll find the y-intercept. And so to find x-intercepts, you always make y zero. So it'll be zero equals to x squared minus 3x minus 4. You can then factorize that fairly easily, or you could use the quadratic formula if you wish. I usually use the quadratic formula, but when it's one that I know is going to factorize easy, then I just do that, of course. So then we're going to end up with x equals to 4 or x equals to negative 1. So we can go put those coordinates on our diagram already. I'm quickly going to find the y-intercept next. So to find the y-intercept, you make x0. So you go to your equation, you make x0, and what you would end up with is negative 4. So our y-intercept is negative 4. So we should always say... 0 and negative 4. And then to find the turning point, if the formula was already written in turning point form, that would be something like that, for example. Then your turning point would be 1 and negative 4. However, our equation is not written out like that. Our equation is written out in the normal form. And so the turning point formula is x equals to minus b over 2a. So if we had to go plug that in on the calculator, or well, let's just fill that in. It's minus, and then b is also negative 3 over 2, and then a's value is 1. And so we're going to end up with 3 over 2. That is the x value of your turning point. To find the y value of your turning point, you'll just plug that x value into the original equation, like this. And then you'll go work that out, and that gives us negative 6.25. So our turning point is going to be located at 1.5, or 3 over 2 for the x values, and then minus 6.25 for the y. And so I'm just going to place it over there, slightly below that point, but that's fine. So then we'll just label that 1.5 minus 6.25. And then you can draw your graph. And so there we have it. Now what we're going to do is take the inverse. So remember, inverse, all that you do is you switch each of the, the coordinates around. And so minus 1, 0 will now become 0, minus 1. So in effect, your x-intercept now becomes your y-intercept. The coordinate 4, 0 now becomes 0, 4. The y-intercept of 0, minus 4 now turns into an x-intercept, which is going to be minus 4 and 0. And then the turning point switches around as well. So now we can just go plot these new points. So 0, minus 1, 0 and 4, minus 4 and 0, and minus 6.25 and 1.5. It's about there. And then we can just simply connect the dots. And so we get something that looks like that. So a parabola, when you take its inverse, it causes the graph to turn on its side like that. Okay, but all we actually did was we found some important points on the original parabola, and then we switched those coordinates around and found the inverse. Now, in our some previous videos, we said that a function is something when, if you draw a vertical line, it should only cut your graph once. Well, if we draw a vertical line through this new parabola, it cuts twi it, it will always cut at two points. And so this red graph, or this new parabola, is not a function. Sorry, not this new parabola, but the inverse of the parabola is not a function. So a question teachers often like to ask is, where would we cut the original graph so that when we take the func the inverse of it, we will end up with a function. Well, all that you need to do is cut it right in the middle. So you could either let x be greater than 
sorry, smaller than or equal to 1.5, or you could let x be greater than or equal to 1.5. Because if we only took the inverse of this purple section, then we would end up with this part over here. And if we took this section, then we would end up with this part over here. And so each of those green halves that I've just showed you, those would be functions. Why? Because if you had to draw a vertical line at any given point, it would only cut that graph once. But if we had both halves, then it's always going to cut it twice, and that is not a function. So teachers will say, how should we restrict the domain of the original function so that the inverse is a function, well then you just cut it exactly at its turning point.